What I'd like to do, there was a survey done recently that, and uh, talking about things hindering open source adoption. And one, I think number two on the list was the availability of people skilled in, in open source uh, you know, development, support, and so forth. Uh, so I'd like to shift gears and talk about education, which was the third uh, major theme of, of uh, this evening, um, and just uh, uh, quickly get some thoughts from the panel about uh, in what ways open so so source software is well or ill-suited to being used in schools for teaching, in other words, building the skills for the future and helping to develop those ecosystems and business values. So uh, perhaps uh, Don, maybe yeah. first, John. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I think one of the ways that it's well suited for for schools is. Um, especially at the university level, is it's amazing how many successful businesses start with a bunch of uh, drunken college frat boys <laughs> uh, hammering away at something in the, in the dorm room. Uh, and if they're doing that in a, you know, with, with an open source code base that can be turned into some sort of commercial effort afterwards, there's a very natural progression uh, that happens there. <laughs> and, and so the, the dream of the, of the college frat boy becomes not landing a job at, at the, the company whose tool you learned in university, but it's basically being able to start your own company or, mm. or, uh, or start your own business. Is it the, the autonomy, the empowerment, or what's the attractiveness? So I, it's the license, to be honest. It, it's, yeah. it's the fact that at the end of the day, you know, the skills that you're picking up at university uh, translate into something you can go off and do on your own and, and aren't necessarily tied to uh, some sort of uh, you know, commercial product set. Have, have uh, uh, building blocks, commodity building blocks, have skill equals money. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so, so part of the um, part of the challenges though that I see is is that is that well the com the commercial software vendors have caught on to this, right? And there's there's actually a lot of comp there's a lot of competition at the university level um, to to give away free software for educational purposes. Um, and, and you know all you have to do is flip through any news feed on, on any given week in August, and you'll learn about all the universities that are getting all this free software. Um, so th so there's there's a temptation there. In the Eclipse community, what we've struggled with is is a lack of um, is a lack of uh, training materials. Mm -hmm. So the software's there, but there isn't necessarily the 16 weeks of pretty PowerPoint slides at you know three hours a week kind of thing. Uh, and, and so we we actually invested uh, some, some some time and resources and, and uh, last year and have been working on a university curriculum around some some of the Eclipse projects and building the tools. Uh, to make to make it easier, and we've had some some success with that, but uh, but at the same time, it's when a university is looking at you know endowment from this company, and uh, all of a sudden this free promise, <coughs> all of a sudden this uh, promise of free software, and gee, they already have a curriculum that we can <laughs> more or less use, or this open source stuff that sort of has something that that, that was put together. So that, that's the challenge we face. So the rewards are good, but the there's definitely some competing interests. What do you think, Mike? I think that there's there's a huge opportunity to to just be able to give students the opportunity to, to dig in and, and experiment and and blow up blow up a piece of software. So you know how you know it's to, to understand the fundamentals of it, to pick it apart, right. to to play with it. I think it's 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 amazing. I think that the um, that what Firefox has done for the browsing environment, just to be able to open up a space where you can you can customize it so much, you can make it be whatever you want it to be. It's, it's, it's you know Firefox is becoming a um, almost a I mean a, an application that that you can build so much more upon, and, and uh, uh, to give that to students and to have that be a space for them to to learn how to to build their own applications for doing whatever it wasn't. Even, uh, it was interesting actually uh, looking at, um, um, at being at the the, uh, the DrupalCon uh, in in Washington D.C. They Dries, the founder, was talking about how he started uh, Drupal uh, in you know, as a drunken frat boy, um, and uh, you know, and, and and the the ability to sort of play with these tools and to experiment with them, and contribute them, mm -hmm. and to have over the last you know ten years grown into an organization that has has you know. Thousands and thousands of websites and thousands of developers and users and, and that is 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 helping to you know starting from from a university an individual trying to go off and to, to take an idea and extend it and it was really quite a, an interesting 
perspective to see his, his keynote. Not that he described himself as a as a, 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 a drunken frat boy, because uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and we, we may be laughing at the drunken college frat boy and the free open source software thing, but um, but. Look at Google, right? If it wasn't for the availability of a free open source uh, operating system mm -hmm. that they could scale without having to pay Microsoft for every single CPU that they deployed, um, you know, as a university project, yeah. mm -hmm. Google wouldn't be Google. Mm 